everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com. Here to do your weekly intuitive reading for Monday, November 9th through Sunday, November 15th, 2020. For this week's weekly reading, we'll be using the Syrian Starseed Tarot by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha for the main message for everyone. And your special message card this week, depending on your stone of choice, will be coming from The Secret Language of Light by Denise Jarvie. So let's go ahead and start out by taking a look at your stones of choice. Your first stone of choice is this beautiful Sujolite. Now Sujolite is a purple stone. This one is a little bit more of a lavender purple, but it can be a little bit of a darker purple. And the Sujolite helps to assist in overcoming negative emotions. It helps to relieve stress, bring peace of mind, bring emotional healing, and it helps to open up your crown chakra to spiritual and unconditional love. It's known as that stone of unconditional and spiritual love. Your second stone of choice is a beautiful blue lace agate. Isn't that beautiful? It's got the, the light blue and the dark blue there. And the blue lace agate is a stone that helps to provide calm and peace and tranquility. It aids in verbal expression of your thoughts and your feelings. Helps you to let go of old emotions, especially those that are related to childhood trauma. And of course, this one opens up and balances the throat chakra and even your ear chakras. And so this is for speaking your truth authentically, for channeling and for receiving messages, which would be clear audience and hearing messages. And then your last stone of choice is beautiful zoysite, beautiful green zoysite, which has these black spots. And that's the way it kind of comes and looks. The zoysite is a stone of return. So what does that mean? Stone of return, return to self, return to center, return to relaxation, return to healthy circumstances in one's life. It's a stone of mental creativity and is known to reset the mind. So if your mind has been you know, moving through fears, anxieties, and worries, this can help to reset you on a mental level. So again, your stones of choice for this week are the Sujolite, the Blue Lace Agate, or the Green Zoysite here. Uh, just a reminder too, before we get into the astrology of this week, is that this is the first full, or the second, excuse me, the second full week in the month of November. So if you haven't already watched that monthly intuitive reading for the month of November, be sure to go onto my YouTube channel and watch that to hear what the overall energies of the whole month are, the astrological transits of significance, as well as messages from our angels and guides for the collective, and a special message card um, from a stone of choice for that monthly reading as well. For this week, though, we have a lot going on this week astrologically. We start on Monday the 9th with Venus, the planet of love, relationships, money, finance, personal resources, our values. She's in her home sign right now of Libra. So she's very at home here in Libra. And Libra, of course, is all about balance, harmony, compromise, relationships, partnerships. And Venus and her home sign is opposing Mars, the warrior, the planet of energy, action, and forward movement, in his home sign of Aries. So it's interesting here, we call these planets, Venus and Mars, the lovers, right? Venus is the feminine, Mars is the masculine. These are the lovers and they are opposing one another. And it's also interesting that Venus is in her home sign of Libra and Mars is in his home sign of Aries, although he is still in retrograde motion. He's at the tail end of his retrograde motion because a little bit later on this week, he's turning back to direct motion. So what does this mean, Venus opposing Mars? This might mean that there is some highlights within the realm of relationships around Monday. This can even be as early as Saturday, Sunday um, of the previous week, if you're watching this a little bit early, or it might take us into even uh, Tuesday with some of the aftermath, but this is about peace, balance, harmony, and compromise versus take charge, initiation, uh, make it happen, 
I'm the leader kind of energy. Because Venus in Libra wants to be the peacemaker and look to what others need in the relationship or what others want in the relationship. And whether that be a romantic relationship, business, friendship, family, or otherwise, Venus wants to kind of keep that peace and kind of gives over, if you will, to the other person to make sure their needs are met. Whereas Mars in Aries is all about the self. And this can be in a healthy way, but it can also be in a not so healthy or not so balanced way where Mars and Aries can be a little bit selfish, a little bit egotistical, um, a little bit running roughshod over people, taking charge, taking control, you know, just wanting to be in in the, the position of being first or being the leader. So there might be something in regards to relationship matters that are needing to be looked at and balanced out appropriately. Also on Monday the 9th, the sun, which is currently in Scorpio, we're in Scorpio season now, the sun in Scorpio is in a positive connection to Neptune in Pisces. And Neptune is the planet of, of the spiritual realm. It's the planet of unconditional love and compassion. And it can also be the planet of illusion, confusion, and delusion. So this, is, this aspect is also moving us into Tuesday, just depending on what part of the world you're in. We could be experiencing this on Monday or, and or Tuesday. But the sun in connection with Neptune, now normally that might be a little bit difficult and challenging to where we're confused as, as far as our identity, but this is a positive connection. So I feel like this is about us coming more into our spiritual power because Neptune brings the spiritual influence, the sun in Scorpio. Scorpio is a sign that is all about power or empowerment. And with the positive connection, this can be about us moving into, again, or taking back our spiritual power in some way, owning our spiritual power, utilizing our spiritual power in a, a wise way. Both of these planets are in water signs, which is um, about intuition and emotions and feelings and creation and artistic endeavors and psychic and healing abilities. And so all of these things also can be increased, especially our connection to our dreams and psychic impressions and healing abilities. So look for that also to be on the rise. Um, let's see, on Tuesday... On Tuesday the 10th, Mercury, which is the planet of the mind, it's the planet of the mental realm, it rules our thoughts, our ideas, our communications, is moving out of Libra, where it retrograded back into for a few days, and now is moving back into Scorpio, where Mercury was when it first went retrograde some weeks ago, three and a half or so weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago now. And with Mercury moving back into Scorpio, that means we're moving out of that Mercury retrograde cycle. However, it's still in its shadow until November 20th. So what does it mean by Mercury still being in its shadow? When Mercury went retrograde, it went retrograde at 11 degrees of Scorpio. Since on the 10th of November, Mercury is just moving into Scorpio, it's going to be at zero degrees Scorpio on November 10th, it has 11 more degrees to go before it moves past that point where it was when it first went retrograde. Meaning whatever that whole entire Mercury retrograde cycle was about for you, with miscommunication, missed meetings, not understanding things, um, things being confused in your uh, expressing yourself to one another, missed messages, things just the timing wasn't right for things, etc. It's going to take a few more days, again until November 20th, till Mercury moves past that 11 degree point and therefore out of its shadow for things to totally kind of clear up. So there still might be some confusion, although now that it's turned back to direct motion and now that it, it's especially moved back into Scorpio, things should start being... Um, made more clear to us okay and especially in Scorpio that Scorpio energy for Mercury has a great depth of perception being able to perceive what lies hidden in the shadows or hidden underneath and it brings things out of the shadow and into the light basically so to speak we're able to kind of really look down dig down deep within our own psyches within the collective energy uh, that's going on in humanity and and otherwise so 
Um, this is again a very perceptive sign. Also the other thing is that Scorpio is a money sign with the Sun being in Scorpio now Mercury's moving back into Scorpio. It could be highlighting money outside of us because Scorpio rules other people's money and other people's personal resources. So there could be new information or messages coming in regarding those things as well. And of course Scorpio is the, the sign of death and rebirth and transformation, regeneration, transition, uh, tran you know, transmuting lower vibrational energies. And since we're still with the sun in Scorpio, there could be some of that death and rebirth energy going on as well. Now with Mercury moving back in Scorpio, we're going through a transition or a transformation in regards to what we think, what we perceive, and what we believe because that's the planet of the mental realm. On Wednesday the 11th, Venus, still in Libra, is going to be making an odd quincunx connection to Neptune. So the quincunx is an aspect where we need to adjust something. Venus wants to be equal, balanced, fair, just in relationship matters. Everything has to be balanced and equal and harmonious with Venus and Libra. That quincunx to Neptune might bring in a little bit of uncertainty or illusion or not perceiving, seeing, or experiencing something very clearly, not being grounded, and there just needs to be some adjustments within our connections, our relationships with other people. On Thursday the 12th, oh this is a big one, Jupiter is connecting with Pluto. Now this has been going on back and forth since the beginning of 2020, Jupiter and Pluto together. Jupiter is the planet of our belief systems, it is our expanded perceptions. It is the big picture of how we see and perceive things. Jupiter is the exaggerator and he rules the expansion principle. So wherever Jupiter is in your charts or wherever Jupiter is uh, transiting the sky and, and the planets that it's connecting to, it exaggerates or expands the energy of. And as Jupiter is coming back together now for the third time this year of 2020 with Pluto, Pluto the planet that's known as the great destroyer and the planet of death and rebirth and transformation and regeneration and transmuting old energies and big changes. Pluto kind of likes to tear things down and sort of destroy the, um, the solid foundations that we have in our life so that we can rebuild, so that we can transform, so that we can you know make something better and more powerful. And Pluto deals with power and control and also deals with empowerment, right? So the positive side is us taking our power back or being empowered. The negative side is being overpowered or disempowered and things, uh, situations, people abusing their power and control over us. So with Jupiter coming back together with Pluto, and again, this is something we're feeling all week and we have felt the previous week where this has been inching closer together, Jupiter's expanding all of that. Jupiter's expanding the death and rebirth energies of Pluto, expanding the power and control energies of Pluto, expanding our ability to take back our power, expanding our ability to transform or transmute uh, lower energies within our lives. This is also about judgments and belief systems being uh, expanded out of control, okay? and. And this has definitely been a year for that happening on and off, right? It's been this ebb and flow of judgments between people and judgments between groups and judgments in different political parties and, and everything else. And so this is coming to a head again on Thursday the 12th. Again, it doesn't mean it goes away after the 12th, but it comes to a head. Now on Friday the 13th, and yes, I said Friday the 13th, we have Mars in his home sign of Aries. And he's finally going back to direct motion at 15 degrees of Aries. And so all week this week, Mars has kind of been at a standstill. It's been standing still at 15 degrees of Aries. So if you feel physically more tired or physically depleted in your energy or with circumstances or situations, you feel like nothing's really moving forward and things are a little bit stalled in the last few days. This is why, because Mer uh, Mars is what we call stationed or stopped at 15 degrees. Then it turns back to direct motion on the 13th and it will take a few days, it will take a couple of weeks to start 
moving faster to start you know getting up to speed where he needs to be so there will be a shift but also be patient with how things are unfolding or how fast things are unfolding just have to have a little bit more patience but we'll start to see things start to now fall into place and move forward in our lives and in the collective of humanity on saturday the 14th we're nearing a new moon at 23 degrees scorpio now right before that new moon happens the sun in scorpio is going to be connecting in a positive way to pluto and then to jupiter so this gives us some opportunities to take our power back in a nutshell and some of where we need to take our power back might be within our own belief systems okay could be within circumstances and situations but also within what you're already perceiving and believing to be true for you or your life this is where there's an opportunity to kind of change that and the fact that we have a new moon on saturday now this is also going into sunday depending again on what part of the world you're in is when this new moon is taking place we're in the dark of the moon phase before that, right? So when Jupiter connects with Pluto on Thursday, when Mars turns direct on Friday, we're in that dark of the moon phase when things seem to be a little bit more emotional. Things seem to be um, on this inner level. We're moving through something emotionally speaking and transmuting and releasing and letting go and surrendering and healing some some things especially with a new moon in scorpio because scorpio is very deep very perceptive very transformative in and of itself new moons are about new beginnings and planting new seeds this is in the realm of all scorpio all things that deal with scorpio is where the new seeds are being planted where the new beginnings could take place again power death and rebirth transformation and change um, moving down deep into our psyche and pulling out what's in the the shadow part of our psyche or, or ego that needs to be transmuted um, healing um, psychic abilities clairsentience um, telepathy all of these things are ruled by scorpio mediumship as well okay on sunday aside from that new moon moving us into sunday we have mercury and scorpio and that's going to be in a quincunx aspect to Chiron, the wounded healer. Chiron deals with past life wounds. Currently, he's in Aries for everyone, for us as a collective. So we're healing wounds on a collective level regarding our sense of self-identity, our independence, our ability to take charge of our lives. Mercury and Scorpio connecting with Chiron is empowering us on a mental level in order for us to do so. Again, to take our power back on a mental level with our thoughts, our perceptions, our ideas, our belief systems regarding our sense of independence, self-identity, uh, taking charge of our lives, and paying attention to what our needs are as a person. Also on Sunday, Venus, still in Libra, is challenging both pluto and then jupiter on the same day so venus has been a little bit busy this week again she's in her relationship sign her partnership sign her sign of balance harmony and equality um, but she's kind of had a rough road this week first opposing mars on monday and then connecting in a weird way with Neptune on Wednesday. Now on Sunday, she's challenged by Pluto and Jupiter, which is expanding again, judgments or power and control issues. Um, you know, these planets have their positive sides too, but the, this is a challenging connection between Venus and Pluto and Venus and Jupiter. So we have to look at the shadow side of those planetary energies. Now there's always opportunity to empower ourselves and to shift our belief systems with that but it might be through some sort of challenging situation or circumstance okay so let's go ahead and get to the cards and see what the messages are from our angels and guides this week so the first card is major arcana 18 and this is luna now in the traditional tarot this is the moon card not uh, too surprising because we do have a new moon, although this shows a nice big full moon, but we have a new moon in Scorpio. This is still appropriate because this card has, you know, this kind of darkness around the full moon, not in a bad way, but it, it's nighttime. It's got the water, which signifies our emotions, our emotional body, the, the rising tides of our emotions. And again, as we're in that dark of the moon phase, 
in Scorpio before the Scorpio new moon, we're going to be dealing with some uh, emotional undercurrents, some maybe emotional fears or anxieties or other heavy sort of emotional energies that need to be transmuted, released, let go. And that's what this Luna card or the moon card is all about. Now again, we're in the dark of the moon, even though this looks like a full moon, but I want to say that the message here is to shine light upon the darkness, so to speak. So in the darkness, in the dark of the moon, shine your own light or channel the divine light through your crown chakra in meditation and channel that light, channel this light right here onto the recesses of your psyche, the depths of your psyche, what lies hidden beneath the emotional currents within you. And that is what's going to help to transmute some of those lower energies and to bring uh, a healing and a, a lift those and, and to be able to transcend those um, and let them go uh, and at least heal a cycle of what's been going on in your life. All right, let's take a look at the next card here and see how the week progresses. Okay, this is the Ten of Orbs. In the traditional tarot, this is the Ten of Swords. And you can see that there's someone laying face down, it looks like on a bed, and there's all these orbs that are descending down upon them. Now again, the traditional tarot would be Ten of Swords, which is the mental realm, the swords. And the swords rule our thoughts, you know, it rules our mind, our perceptions. This person looks like, you know, they look tired. They look like they've had it, you know, with whatever's going on. All these thoughts, all these maybe negative thoughts or perceptions or belief systems, feeling uh, overburdened, feeling chaos, feeling confusion, um, maybe depression, maybe anger, frustration, whatever's going on on the mental level they're kind of at their at their end here because they're lying face down. They don't want to look at it anymore. They don't want to face it anymore. They're tired, okay? The good thing about this is, though, better than the Nine of Orbs, is that the Ten of Orbs is the last of that minor arcana. So this means that we're getting to the end of whatever this is. Whatever this is that is causing this frustration or this depression or this anxiety or whatever this is going on on the, on the mental body realm, we're getting to the end of it and we'll be able to transmute it. It's almost like in the surrender, this person is kind of surrendering, right? They can't fight it anymore. They can't try to move against the tide anymore. They're just kind of surrendering and they're going to rest basically. They're going to rest and lie down. So this is kind of saying that in the surrender of what's going on around you or what's happening, to bring this mental confusion or frustration or, or mental imbalance, that that's part of what's going to bring healing. Again, following that Luna card and, and bringing darkness to the shadow and surrendering to, um, kind of surrendering, I don't wanna say surrendering to what is as much as I wanna say surrendering to letting go of and knowing that the ego sometimes you know, brings up the shadows that aren't even real. Now, some, of course, what we live in, the circumstances and situations are real. But sometimes we're projecting. We're projecting in the future, the what ifs. What am I going to do if? And that's where a lot of the fears, and that's where a lot of the anxieties and depression comes in. And we can't predict the future. We can't change the past. So we have to let the past go, whatever happened. And we can't predict the future quite yet. The, the future is not yet set in stone. And things can always change with a change of our own thoughts, a change of our own direction, taking a different action, both on a personal as well as a collective level. So this is about surrendering in the present moment to what's happening and allow the healing to take place on a mental level to kind of lift. It's almost like we have to lift these little orbs of light. We have to lift them back up and kind of release them to the universe to be transmuted to a higher vibration of light. And that's where some of the healing on that mental level will start to take place. Okay, so we've got a lot of kind of heavy energies here emotionally. Luna is the emotions. Of course, the Ten of Orbs is the mental. Let's see what the last card is. Ooh, great. Love that we're ending with the star card. Beautiful. So this is Major Arcana number 17, the star card. Traditional tarot, it's, it's called the same thing. 
And this card is always about our hopes and our dreams and our wishes for the future and knowing that that we're heading in the right direction. That, you know, some of this is about divine timing. You see the star, there's all these stars, the universe. The universe is saying that everything is unfolding in divine timing. Everything is unfolding. There's a divine plan at play here. And if you just focus upon what are your hopes, what are your dreams, where do you want to go, you know, what are your expanded perceptions, your vision for the future, and focus on that. Focus on the positive of your hopes and your dreams and your wishes for the future. And, you know, release yourself from the Luna emotional energy and release yourself from the Ten of Orbs mental energy that is more heavy and fearful. Because as you just focus on the brightness, the light, the stars, the blessings, the universal uh, protection, the universal guidance and assistance here with the star card, then you're going to be heading in the right direction. You can see that there's a deity here, you know, and in, in the sky and the star here, this deity is on this kind of boat, if you will, and they're traveling, traveling in the right direction. They're traveling to where they need to go in order for the bright future and their bright blessings to unfold and manifest and come into fruition. And the trick into manifesting blessings and dreams is to keep your mind, your heart, your soul on those dreams to, to focus on, you know, to feel the joy and happiness, to think about what your goals are in the most positive sense, and then to take actions based on those positive feelings and thoughts. Okay, so that's a good, good way to end this, this message for the week. So let's take a look at your special message card. Depending on your stone of choice for the week. So for those of you that chose the Sujolite, this one's calling my attention for Sujolite people. And it says variance. Oops, I'm trying to make sure that the, the lighting here doesn't take away from the picture. I don't know if you can see the picture very well, but this is it's called variance and it's showing this person kind of in a meditative pose here at the bottom of the card and this kind of light coming down from the heavens. In fact, this is almost like angel wings and a an, um, uh, higher deity of some sort of angel or guide, higher dimensional being of light. And this universal light that's flowing down from this wonderful being and through the crown chakra of this person who's down here at the bottom of the card meditating. So. I believe that this message is about silencing yourself and making yourself still, especially in the dark of the moon. It's a great time during the dark of the moon time to do some self-healing, some meditation, some contemplation, um, to balance your chakras. I see that even some of the chakras here within this person's body is lit up. This is a time of healing. This is a time of stillness. This is a time of going within and connecting with your higher soul self, which can be indicated by this beautiful, brilliant light here in the center, and connecting with those of the higher vibration of light, angels, guides, ancestors of the light, healers of the light, star brothers and sisters of the light, you know, whatever it is. And you can see that with the, the angel wings that are, are at the top. That is, we connect with the higher energy of the universe and the higher beings of the universe that we're going to be able to right ourselves, heal ourselves, balance ourselves, bring peace to ourselves within ourselves, and all will be, all will be right, all will be righted. And especially, I think, with um, some of the energies that will be coming up, you know, as we move forward and past this week, um, we're now in that new moon cycle, right? And we're actually, just a little heads up, as we get to the end of the month of November, we're going to be entering into eclipse season again on November 30th we start with a full moon lunar eclipse and then the middle of December a new moon solar eclipse so there's um, things that are up and coming that will be happening so right now do healing do self contemplation shift your perspectives your belief systems that's the best thing you can do right now and connect with again those of the highest vibration of light okay for those of you that chose the blue lace agate Giving this a little shuffle, asking for the message for Blue Lace Agate. This one's calling my attention for Blue Lace Agate. 
This one says whispers. So whenever I see this card whispers, it makes me think of clear audience listening to the whispers of spirit listening to the whispers of the universe listening to the whispers of your angels and guides and listening to the whispers of your higher soul self or your inner guide so there's messages that are coming but they they sound like little you know whispers on on the the currents of the air basically maybe even whispers in your dreams whispers in your sleep whispers in your meditation time this to me feels like there's messages coming but I don't feel like they're blatant messages. I feel like you have to tune in, trust, tune in, and listen, and listen to what is being whispered to you. And I'm getting a sense too to get out in nature with this card, because oftentimes uh, I think about my own experience of getting out in nature and when the breeze kind of rustles through the trees or just being in the silence of nature, if you can get out somewhere where there's no other people around and you're in the silence of nature around the trees, uh, flowers, animals, plants, etc., you're going to hear whispers, whispers from those of the fairy realm, whispers of those of the nature realm, maybe even whispers of those of the crystal realm. If you have crystals, you can meditate with your crystals and your crystals might whisper some messages to you too. But this to me is all about messages of a higher vibration. If you look more closely, you actually see uh, a pyramid shape there at the bottom of the card right here. And even more closely, you can see what looks like a Star of David here. It's like a Merkaba energy. So this to me is this Merkaba energy of light, this vehicle of light that again, from the heavens and from all directions of time and space here, is filtering down into this pyramid shape and then whatever this higher vibrational energy is all about, whatever these messages are that spirit is giving you and guiding you with, it can be made manifest. It can be brought into some sort of manifestation and form within this pyramid structure here. Okay, we're gonna put this one this way. And then for those of you that chose the um, zoisite, so message, special message for Zoisite people. This one's calling my attention. And this is soul name, soul name. And love all the, the beautiful imagery in all these cards. This one has what looks like a heart with golden white light in the center of it. And around that golden white light of that heart, we have white light, purple light, pink light, and you know, further out we have beautiful blue light, um, some lavender color purples here. So we have a lot of beautiful colors here of unconditional love and higher awareness and speaking your truth and being authentic. And this to me feels like, at least the message that comes in this time with soul name, is to go back to your original birth name even if you don't use your original birth name anymore maybe you're you know you go by a married name maybe you've legally changed your name or maybe you've just changed your name and go by a nickname and you don't go by your real name some of you go by your middle name instead of your first name it's not to suggest you need to go by your soul name or your given birth name but spirit, your angels and guides want you to reconnect with your soul name because there's something important in the energy, and there always is. That's why you come in with the name that you do. It's the energy blueprint of what your soul comes in with. So this message is about reconnecting to, in a meditation, your soul name. What is your full name as it was given to you at birth? And to just meditate upon that, at least, you know, for a few minutes. Maybe you can do it all week at different times during the week. But calling in the essence of that vibration of your name, calling in your soul's essence through remembering your soul name. And this has a secondary meaning, they're saying. They're saying not only is this about your given name and calling in the essence of that because then you're calling in your gifts and talents and abilities and activating the truth of who you are, but the secondary meaning of soul name here is about um, like a spiritual soul name. There's some sort of, and this could be relating to a past life. This could be relating to a star brother and brother or sister or your star name um, 
or some sort of deity um, or teacher of the light, you know, kind of calling you by a soul name. And I can't really tell you exactly how it is to connect with your soul name, except for to say, again, meditation is important. I feel like if you just in meditation, you call in those of the highest vibration of light, your angels, your guides, your ancestors, and you ask them, what is my soul name? What can you tell me about my soul name? And you might hear something. You, maybe you want to try to write or automatic write. Maybe you want to listen again to what's being said. Maybe you get some sort of a, a picture uh, if you're a clairvoyant and you, you see you know, something that will tell you what the soul name is all about. Now don't get frustrated if you can't do that. It's okay. This is just a message for some of you. But the, uh, that first message of connecting with your, your soul's true vibration for your, through your given name of birth, this is about, you know, the, the essence of the message is remembering who you are, remembering what your soul is all about, what your soul came here to do. And it's that connection that's the most important. All right, so I hope everyone has enjoyed this weekly intuitive reading. Thank you so much for following um, my page, for liking and sharing my videos, for making comments on my videos, and for giving me suggestions on how to expand myself. A lot of you gave me some very helpful suggestions over the last couple of weeks about expanding through Instagram and doing different and various things to um, be able to reach more people, reach more people with my spiritual work and, and guidance and assistance as that is what I'm here to do. So thank you all so much for your love and your kindness and your support in various ways. I send you all much love and light and many, many angel blessings.